Hey everybody, it's Keith with Bob C and C here today with Robert. Hey, I'm still here my today best friend. Keith, no, no, no. We're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're talking about yeah, it. Yeah, it's a relationship yeah. in process. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we're continuing yeah. our <laughs> we're so. continuing our series on. Uh, I, I I forget what are you doing? Those having okay. bailed hostility. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> no, I wasn't well, trying to be cool. Bailed hostility. Yeah, bailed hostility. Well, I don't know what's available about it. I've been dealing with that are possibility gonna, for years. Are we going to talk about how you can hit your head on a building and oh, dip the building? What, do you want to? I can tell you how to do it. Oh, it's, I broke my glasses. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, it's, it, it, it's, uh, it's embarrassing. Mm -hmm. And it's also hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I would say it'd be more fun watching me run into the building than actually. It leads right into what we want to talk about. Yeah, today. it's, it's about something about rigidity. rigidity yeah. And the building is rigid. Yeah. And I'm not. Yeah. I bounce. Your head bounced pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> well, the rest of me did too. Oh, I'm kind of sore. Yeah. But yeah, we're talking about uh, something that's really important to understand as you're shopping for a CFC. And it has to do with what makes. What makes the CNC accurate? A lot of guys uh, like to think in terms of material stiffness and rigidity, and so the big honking machine, thick and heavy, is the way to go. And uh, but there's more to that. There's a lot of geometry that goes with that. Yeah, there, it's definitely a system. I mean, if if you took like a, a thirty thousand pound machine that had all the all the bolt screws and all the other stuff, yeah. and you put NEMA seventeen seventy five ounce inch torch, it wouldn't move it, right? <laughs> it has it has to be designed together. I mean, the same thing would be true is if if you had uh, uh, super ball screws and uh, you know um, a high precision with the preload and servo motors, and yet your system uh, was made really with no with a lot of flex you still wouldn't be able to get precise so, so if you have a really precise ball screw uh, and believe me there's levels different levels of precisions on those right then you'll need a different uh, type of system so and that's why you know your CNC's can range to you know a half a million dollars or even more right, right. when you start talking uh, and have a lot of mass right because they're designed to do certain things uh, um, and that's why, uh, like for instance, our Evolution uh, Three or Evolution Four, we can we can make it out of wood structure, go with NEMA 17s and a belt drive. So what you wouldn't want to do is go with a uh, a uh, open belt drive on a, a machine to cut steel. It just it would be like, why would you right. do that? It wouldn't work. You know, you, you you can't hold the tolerances that you need to hold. So you know, there's the the big thing is is you got to remember it's a system, right? So right. it. An interesting note, I was watching some videos where um, a CNC company was talking about the machine and it was steel, uh, welded steel frame, and, and they were saying, yeah, it's not like the aluminum ones. And you know, then the aluminum people go, yeah, ours is aluminum and we make that and it's not like the wooden ones. And then I guess the wooden ones would go, yeah, but it's not like the 3D printed ones, right? So, you know, there's definitely a a different level of machines that you can go, you know, all the way up to the steel industrial machines, right. all the way down to where there's 3D printed uh, CNC machines that work. You just need to understand that there's a system that makes them work. So you were talking about geometry yeah. versus material properties, and we have a video on that. Maybe I should update it. Uh, there's two things. Uh, if you take a simply supported beam, there's two things that make that beam rigid. No deflection if you were to push in the middle or on the side. There's material properties, right? So steel, aluminum, cardboard, tissue paper would be really tough, yeah. right? And then there's geometry. And uh, both of those are just numbers when it comes down to it in an equation. So if your material properties are light, like say you're using the plywood, like we do it here at Bob C and C's, then your geometry has to make up for that difference to get the same rigidity. So when you're uh, aluminum, then you don't need as much geometry uh, to help you out. Or if you're steel, you don't need as much geometry. And by geometry, what are you adding to make the plywood stiffer? Well, I mean, just basically you want to get your plywood out uh, on the outside. Or it, it doesn't matter if it's plywood, your material. Right. I mean, if you have, obviously, or it should be obvious, or it is to me, it's obvious, I don't know. Oh, geez, here we go again. The same geometry, right? So if you had a tube that was five inches by five inches out yeah. of steel, 
right, and you had exactly the same geometry out of aluminum, it's going to be way more rigid in the steel, right? Right, and then of course the same thing would be true if you made a plywood beam that same size, uh, an aluminum would be made way more. So, so th to make something more rigid, there's things that you can do, but you got to keep it from twisting and torsion, and you got to keep it from bending, right? right? So there's there's methods that you can make any material more rigid, uh, including paper. I mean, or cardboard. I mean, uh, like I mean, the guys that are uh, making uh, 3D printed plastic CNC machines, right? I mean, they have to really uh, be careful about the geometry and the material properties as well, right? To make sure that their plastic is good. But this is the same thing with how would you measure the rigidity? Is that where resolution is going to come in? No, I mean, mm -hmm. no. It's actually there's it's an engineering calculation. It's just there's a. Uh, uh, no, I mean, okay, I might have asked the wrong qu or asked okay. the question incorrectly. Okay. But now I'm just shopping for a CNC. What, as I look at all the different specifications that are listed by a manufacturer, is there anything that would indicate to me the inherent? Yeah, no, not no. really. Okay. I well, mean, good. you know. Everybody's just guessing. I, yeah, well. <laughs> Well, honestly, I, I, this is where marketing comes in, right? I mean, our, our machine will cut anything, right? Well, we'll just... Well, yes, yeah. diamonds. Yeah, diamonds. Oh, there we do all kinds of stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Yeah, we make uh, fuel nozzles for yeah. NASA. Okay. But, nope. but, but, yeah, when you look at a machine, unless you understand mechanics of materials and right. understand design, then, uh, you know, I mean, some of it's intuitive, right? Uh, you know, when in doubt, make it stout is an is, uh, is, uh, uh, engineering statement. You, if, if you don't know... Just make it thicker, you know, so you'll definitely have enough strength. And so there's some machines out there that are overbuilt, right? Because, uh, you know, they didn't do the engineering calculations. But I know when I added this quarter inch piece of plate and bolted it on, it doesn't, it doesn't wiggle at all. So we're good, right? So there, there's that way. So, you know, maybe there's some intuitiveness that you can look at it and go, wow, that looks pretty wimpy in that spot. And, you know, you might want to stay away from those machines. But... But that'll fool you. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, there is uh, there is manufacturers out there that that make a steel router where the gantry tube is maybe out of quarter inch wall, and then there's some that make it out of a one eighth inch wall, and one's going to be more rigid. Uh, that's going to allow you to cut faster and deeper, right? If you have the horsepower and all the other equipment to match. So yeah, you definitely uh, definitely want to. Uh, Take a look at the machine and uh, maybe do some reviews about, you know, flex. Uh, but that, I guess that goes back to the other point. So, you know, if you if you buy a fifteen thousand dollar machine, I would like to think that you would expect it to perform a lot better than if you bought a fifteen hundred dollar machine, right? So, with my fifteen hundred dollar machine, maybe I can cut it a hundred inches a minute, and with this one, maybe I can cut it four hundred inches a minute. And maybe this one, you know, it, it, it doesn't have the horsepower to take a half-inch bit where this one does. So there's those type of things. But, uh, but those, you know, you know, typically if it's better, it's going to cost more. Right. Right. So uh, I think that's a fair rule. Guys, if you have any questions about uh, machine design or specifically the, the, the kind of engineering that went into building ours, you can get a hold of us at shop talk at bobcnc.com. Yeah, I love talking engineering stuff, so. Uh, <laughs> yes, he does. We'll yeah, see you guys. Yeah, that hurts, man. <laughs> I'm going back to this. <laughs>